Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, February 2nd, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. And as predicted, uh, less than a week after we got updates for iOS, watchOS, and the other Apple operating systems, today we got the next version of macOS, and with that, of course, also a whole list of security patches. Now, the iOS updates really just focused on three specific vulnerabilities that had already been exploited. This update for macOS has a much more extensive list of updates. I don't really see anything that's sort of screaming patch now, but you probably do want to update uh, to the latest version of macOS. There are also a couple of functional fixes. The one problem that uh, I've seen people report about uh, this particular update is that if you're using one of the M1 Macs, there may be some issues with loading third-party kernel drivers, in particular users of soft rate. If you're using an external disk drive that relies on the soft rate uh, software, then you may want to be a little bit careful uh, with uh, this particular update. And according to SoftRate, the company behind this software, uh, Apple is working on a fix and you may see another macOS update shortly. And also of interest for Mac users, uh, Patrick Wardle, uh, probably the leading uh, security experts when it comes uh, to anything Apple, has now released all of his objective Z tools for free and open source. Now, some of them have already been available open source for a while, but there were a few that he charged a limited amount of money for. Well, uh, they're now also available as source code on GitHub. And well, and then we have a third uh, Apple uh, news here, and, and that's a blog post that actually came up uh, last week. It didn't get around to really cover it, and that's a change that Apple made in iOS 14 to better protect the iMessage service iMessages is, is responsible for receiving SMS messages, but also various messages via Apple's internal iMessages service and has been the target of attacks in the past. In particular, a couple of very high profile zero click attacks where really all it took was for the victim to receive a message in order for code to be executed. The challenge here is, of course, that messages come in all kinds of sizes and shapes. Uh, There are images, there are different character sets. So parsing them securely and efficiently is not a simple task. So as a result, uh, Apple actually built essentially a sandbox around uh, iMessages and they will call it Blastdoor. Blastdoor is responsible for all the parsing of untrusted data and with that isolates the most risky part of uh, the iMessages service and uh, makes it less likely that an exploit uh, could execute arbitrary code on the system itself. This Blastor service appears to be also written in Swift, uh, which uh, should uh, take care of most of of the classic uh, memory issues that you often end up uh, with uh, some of these parsing and and compression and such uh, algorithms. So that's another step they took to make exploitation less likely. Apple, of course, often doesn't talk much about security improvements like this. So most of this information is coming not from Apple, but instead from a blog post by Google's Project Zero. And last week I talked about uh, the uh, breach of Sonic Wall, and one of uh, the suspects here, how this was accomplished, was a Serde vulnerability in Sonic Wall's SMA 100 series appliances. Now, since then, SonicWall has published a number of updates. They're now actually recommending that you shut down your SMA 100 series device if you can do it. 
put it behind a firewall or at the very least do enable multi-factor authentication and prevent access of the web admin interface. The, these steps will not prevent the actual exploit, but they will limit the impact of any exploit that you may be seeing. Also, the NCC group has also seen active exploitation against this vulnerability. So this is definitely now being used against a wider range of targets. And just to clarify also that uh, there are virtual SMA 100 devices that also run the same 10 dot firmware. Well, uh, they're actually not necessarily called SMA 100. This is like the SMA 200, SMA 210, 400, 410 and and 500 V, which are also vulnerable. Well, this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.